Holy crap, people. My garage is full. Look at this. I've got two gigantic crates that came from Tormach like yesterday. So came like a day after it shipped. It was insane. So here they are. I'm going to break into these things. Um, got the cars moved out into the driveway. That way I can move this bench in this mill out to the side over in the parking spot that I'm standing in. And then that way hopefully everything will kind of go into place. I can start setting the Tormach up in that, in that spot. So I'm not going to bore you with a million um, like time lapses and, and whatnot. So I'll just kind of be checking in here periodically. All right, so it's a little bittersweet. The mill is taken down off the wall. We're going to go ahead and shuffle this over to the side here. And then um, from there, we'll start uncreating all of this. So your last look for a while at this sad little mill. But she'll be back. All right, so the spot is cleared out behind me, as you can see. And i got to be honest, I did not account for all the junk to be under there. So this whole area has blown up over here. You can see I've got junk everywhere. So it's a mess. So hopefully I will find places to put everything once this is installed. So time to open this crate up. Safety glasses. This is the main uh, like coolant trays and everything. So the instructions say just to unpack this crate and get it out of the way because below this crate is another crate with the actual base. So it's a lot heavier duty than I was imagining for sure. All right, so here's the first crate when you open it up um, with the base. So this is what it looks like how they pack it. It was wrapped in plastic uh, right there, but that's all we've done so far. You got your instructions. And to be honest, this base looks huge, so I'm going to have to read the instructions, figure out how to get this thing out of here. Um, I know I remember reading something about putting feet on it, so, so that's the next step. Alright, sides are off the crate, per the instructions, and at this point it says just to take all the loose stuff off. So that's what I'm going to do now. Alright folks, so I've got the um, feet on them. So they've got this like sleeve right here, that you're supposed to be able to turn with it on the ground. Like that. And... Um, this part can stay stationary. This is just a rubber thing, a rubber little foot. But then this piece would stay stationary. This would turn and you'd adjust your height. But when I do that, the bolt that's holding it through, that whole stud, goes into here. It, you run the risk of that loosening up. And if I totally snug it down, it puts the spacer and all this in such compression that it won't turn at all. Like you can still always just turn this when there's no weight on it. But I just thought that was kind of funny. So at this point, my game plan is just to have it pretty snug and then leave these kind of in the middle and um, hopefully go from there. Uh, hopefully there's not too much adjustment needed and my concrete's pretty flat. But just kind of something funky. I, I tried, you can kind of see the red or pink or whatever in there. That's grease. So I greased everything. I greased inside on the threads here. So hopefully it'll all go nice, uh, nice and smooth. But yeah, I'm just kind of a little confused about it. I think it's odd. Alright, I got an assistant to help me get this plastic off of here. Ugh, that's grab. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Once you get it started, you can probably just tear a lot of it too, you see. Yeah. It goes all the way around too. There you go. Here, let me take the knife and you can tear now. Okay, there you go. Okay. Oh, careful. Grab this piece right here. Oh, 
Oh, careful. I think we're about there. Good job. Thank you. That's a lot of plastic. Yeah. Ta -da! Holy cow, look at the size of this thing. It's insane. So, I can't wait. This versus this. Look at, just even like comparing the, the table size, you got that little guy versus that guy. So holy cow, big difference. We gotta get this thing out of here. All right folks, so I think I'm going to call it a day today. Um, I got my neighbor's engine hoist here in the background and it is the standard, like you know, your Harbor Freight Special, 2,000 pounds. And it is not quite wide enough. You can see kind of where it's positioned. It's straddling the, um, the base and it's not going to be able to to go underneath it or anything like that so I'm kind of stuck right there um, I saw on John Grimsmo's old video that he actually put some metal spacers underneath his his table or his stand and made it um, so that his engine hoist could go under it and then afterwards he lifted it with like a 2x6 or, or 2x4 so that he could get his spacers out of there don't really want to do that, so uh, I think what I'm going to do is just wait. Today's the 4th of July, so everything's closed. Um, I think uh, once everything opens up tomorrow, I'm going to call some like tool rental places and just see if they've got an engine hoist um, that has the parallel legs on it, maybe a little bit wider than this one. That way I don't have to deal with that headache, and for 20 30 bucks, it would be a lot better of a deal. Um, so, Tormach is all uncrated. I've still got the base of the crate on there. And it looks like the easiest thing to do with that is just to simply um, take the old sawzall and go around it so that it's just covering the, the mill. That way I can slide the engine hoist underneath it and pick it up. So I think I'm like really close, but yet I just need a, a different engine hoist. The span is 37 inches that you got to be able to, to straddle. And this is not going to do it. So... So in lieu of doing some shady stuff and not very safe stuff, I'm going to go ahead and just call it quits for today. Wish I could have got the sucker on there today and I really wanted to get it fired up, but we'll get there. Um, hopefully by this weekend it'll be up and running. So that's about it for today.